The Be Fit for Health radio show was previously recorded. The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Aloha and thank you for joining me today. This is Be Fit for Health. I'm your host, Bianca. And, you know, it's another beautiful day in Hawaii. Nei, and I'm just always feeling blessed to be here with all of you on Sunday. And you know what? We have another great show. Um, I'm going to dive right into it because, you know, um, I'm running a little late today. So I want to make sure that my guests have ample time to discuss with all of you their uh, specialties and the things that they do as far as options for your well-being and for your health. So today we have two special doctors. The first one is Erin Hunt. She's a medical doctor, board certified family medicine physician. She's completed her training at La Jolla University in Chicago uh, School of Medicine and a Tacoma Family Medicine Residency. She's a native of the Pacific Northwest, and she came to Oahu after her residency. She's been practicing medicine now for about seven years. She's partnered up with Dr. Shauna Rabato, and is a, she's a board-certified family medicine physician as well. She's also board-certified in osteopathic manipulative medicine. She's completed her training at Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine in California. And God bless me if I'm going to be able to pronounce this, because I tried practicing this, but Puyallup. Puyallup Tribe, I believe it's true, Puyallup Tribal Health Authority Residency. Dr. Rabato, you can correct me when, I, when I'm done with this. She also completed her master's in public health at Otoro University, and she's born and raised in Iea. She's a local girl, attended Punahou High School, Boston College, and the University of Hawaii at Manoa. She's been practicing here for the past six years Welcome, ladies, and just for the just for the audience to understand, and for you guys to understand, because we have two of you on the phone. The way that a board system works is we're going to have one of you guys at the time, so if the other can't hear the other person or what have you. Don't worry, we got you. We're going to take care of you today, so it's going to be all good. So I'll start with um, Dr. Erin Hunt, and um, I want to talk to her first and ask her a few questions. If that's okay, they are both. Uh, to collectively uh, built a business called Healing Tides Primary Care. It's over here um, at uh, 1314 South King Street. And they've been um, doing this for uh, quite a bit of time. And, and their way that their practice has been formulated is really awesome because you think of traditional Western medicine um, and what she what they're doing is, and I'm finding more and more with most Western medicine doctors, they're finding that their traditional Western medicine isn't enough. So they're collaborating and coming up with really good solutions to give you some options on your well-being. Dr. Hunt, are you on? I am. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. Is good. This Bianca? Yes, yes. This is this is yeah. this is she. <laughs> Hi, Bianca. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um I just wanted to kind of start with you because um the, I'm just going to ask you a few questions, then I'm going to uh, turn over to your partner in crime and ask her a few when it comes to the way you guys are caring for your patients there at um, your facility. And I just wanted to see if um, you can give me a little bit of an idea of how your clinic is being run right now because of the different modalities that you're offering. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Healing Types Primary Care is a relationship-driven practice, and what that means is that we focus on cultivating a relationship with our patients um, instead of having everything based on production and like how many like how many people can we get through so we can make money. We it's really just establishing a relationship with our patients um, so that we can focus on disease prevention, health maintenance, and management of long term medical conditions. Um, everybody's welcome. Uh, we do take health insurance, but we definitely have a space that would welcome anyone that would want to come to see us. Um, so basically, if you come in, it's a very personalized experience that you'd have with us. Um, and we provide medical attention, but also just support in multiple different ways um, when when you need it. 
So what exactly is your um, position with the, the company? Like, what is, what's your role in the partnership here? Yeah, so Shauna and I established the company together, and how it is set up is basically there are two providers, her and me, and we are truly a partnership, so we're 50-50 in all of our decision-making and how we run the business and um, everything that we do. Uh, and so I'm a provider, a family medicine provider here, and I work with Dr. Robito. and our, our practice is actually set up so that it is literally just the two of us. So all of a patient's interaction would be either with me or with Dr. Robito, depending on which provider they choose to see. So are you guys practicing in the same style or, or do you have something specific that you do that she doesn't do in the, in, in your, in your clinic? So what's great about Shauna is that we both have a similar approach to uh, how we see medicine and well-being. And so, I mean, I was trained uh, in typical Western medicine, so Mm -hmm. I have all of that. But Shauna was also, I mean, she's a DO, so that is different. But she also had similar training in the Western medicine with some other modalities added on to that. Um, but we both approach health and well-being as in treating the whole person, trying to figure out things that will help people, like what, you know, what, what are people willing to do and what are they not willing to do? Are they more wanting to do like a traditional Western medicine thing or try other options? Um, so it's kind of a very fluid a relationship that we have with patients and also between uh, Dr. Robito and myself. Yeah, the collaboration is really key. Like they say this, you know, two minds are better than one. And when you have two doctors working together to uh, take care of a client, it's always a much more productive result. So then my question to you personally is what motivated you to want to open up a practice like this? Well, so I would say that that is kind of a, I have two, two answers to that. Okay. Um, so I, the first is better patient care. Um, so both Shauna and I came from a big box medical center, um, and I was doing urgent care there uh, for the past three years. Mm. And so I would see patients that were coming in, they didn't know who their primary care doctor was. They'd tell me they'd had three different primary care doctors in the past year and they've never met them, um, couldn't talk to anybody. Um, And then when they were able to get in, they didn't have long enough appointments where they were able to like actually talk about what their problems were. And they'd often tell me that they felt like they weren't being heard and that their questions weren't answered. So, you know, I, we thought, well, we we can think of a way to do this better. And so that's where our practice came from. But then also the other side of that is better care for both me and for Dr. Robito as a person, um, just because uh, in a very bureaucratic system, it's difficult to make changes. Everything is production-based and um, really it's inflexible and can be overwhelming. So there wasn't enough time to devote to family and self-care. Yeah, it's kind of true um, across the board when you look at big box um, type of health care. It really is a numbers game. And unfortunately, uh, like most doctors, you guys only are allowed a certain amount of time per care per person. And unfortunately for most patients, you know, and this is the reason why I created the show is most people don't know what they don't know. And so when they see you doctors, they are counting on you to have the answers for things that it's like you being a psychic. I mean, how do you figure out what's going on with someone when you've only seen them for 15 minutes and they had a lifelong illness and you're trying to figure out playing detective, what they did, what they ate or what they, you know, genetically maybe a disposition. It's very difficult for doctors in the big box chain of healthcare to really spend that quality time to take care of their, their patients. And normally you don't have the collaboration at the level that you do when you have a private practice like you do because um, you really need to go through the chain of commands and, and the proper procedures and protocols that the hospital or, or other big um, clinics may may have. So, um, I mean, I understand 
why you started this. It, it makes it a big difference. So what do you find that's different here at your own practice that you're doing now as versus what you couldn't do before in these big box uh, arenas? Uh, so almost almost everything is different um, that we can do here as opposed to the um, previous big box medical center way of doing things. So um, I think the first thing is that we can really establish a relationship with our patients. And that is one that's based off of trust and honesty and, um, you know, just really spend time to get to know them Mm -hmm. and, you know, get to know me and, and Dr. Robito. And it's, uh, you know, I, I don't, Say that I have all of the answers, but I'll definitely do the research and try to get answers that will work for patients. Um, and I think that it's it's just more of a, a partnership with patients. So that's that's one thing is just actually having time to be able to um, spend with patients and get to know them and kind of see where they're coming from, what their expectations are. Uh, and and ultimately what their health goals, goals are and figure out a way to achieve those with them. Um, other things are that the schedule is very flexible. So if there is somebody that just, you know, works six days a week and it's, uh, like, impossible for them to take time off and get in to see the doctor, we... Uh, definitely we'll work with them to make it so that it is possible if that is via a video visit. Um, I know that I've gone to see patients not in the office, Mm. um, so that could also be an option. Um, So the schedule is flexible as well. And uh, I think, yeah, those are are two of the the biggest things that are... So what type of um, health conditions have you been coming across lately that you find that in this, in your own pri- private practice that you're able to uh, take care of more efficiently because of the flexibility that you have now versus before? Do you, are you, are you seeing patients that are more elderly, especially with this COVID thing that's been happening? How are you guys taking care of patients that have underlying conditions and how are you able to treat those patients um, effectively with the restrictions that we've had this past year? Yeah, so in my experience, uh, Dr. Robichaud's experience might be a little bit different. Um, I've had a lot of young, mostly healthy patients that are kind of establishing care for the first time Mm -hmm. and wanting to help prevent some of the underlying conditions. Mm -hmm. Um, Most of what I'm seeing is a lot of anxiety and depression. Wow, mental Um, health. Mental health, um, and then also people wanting to lose weight. <laughs> yeah, so, COVID, uh, COVID, ten yeah. pounds or fifteen pounds, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, so I think that it's you know we can spend a lot of time talking about that and coming up with a plan, and then um, checking in, even if it's via phone, um, weekly or more often if needed. Um, I have a couple of my patients that were, were kind of in the first parts of weight loss and they're sending me pictures of what they're eating over the course of two weeks. So then we can review it, nice. um, you know, and just having kind of more of like a interaction. So you're not doing it all by yourself. So you guys are doing nutritional consulting as well. Uh, in a way. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's new. I mean, I mean, how many Western medicine doctors do you know of that actually go into nutrition as a form of helping them, their health? <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of people are eating a lot of processed foods, right. um, not very many vegetables. So I think there's some, some basic nutritional counseling that um, definitely I go into. And uh, there are a few plant-based eaters that... Um, I'm taking care of. And so I can help them with that as well. That's awesome. So is there, um, I'm going to, I'm going to do a, after this question, I'm going to do a quick break and then I'm going to go to uh, your partner in crime next. But uh, is there anything that you do that, that you find has been very effective in this time for people who may have 
um, you know, aches and pains due to lack of movement because they've been, you know, stifled at home or the anxiety factor that you were talking about. How have you been able to um, get to a point where your your patients have been? Because I'm trying to say is like with your private practice, you've got more flexibility. It's your business. So you're able to do much more. Is there anything that you did differently with your business that's opened up uh, versus you being, um, let's say, if you're working still at that big box health uh, arena? Yeah, so I think that just with the aches and pains and people not being moving is just to help them get moving, even if it's doing work at, workouts in their house or walking around the block or, you know, listening to a book and taking a, a walk. Um, just like getting moving again uh, and giving a little bit of reminders to to keep that up even when they're not in the office. Um, and then for, uh, you know, anxiety, definitely oh, meditation is, oh, okay. a, is a good thing. Um, and... Uh, when you, you know, say medita- gratitude. When you say meditation, do you refer them to a specific type of a... Uh, a video or music um, is it guided? Is because most people don't know what how to even start meditating. Yeah, so I mean, there's so many different types of meditation. Uh, there are um, some apps that are helpful, like the Calm app is helpful. Um, so that's one okay. thing that I know some of my patients have been have been doing. Uh, there's definitely meditation that you can just guided meditations on like YouTube that you can look up right um and do yeah but um and then there's a there's a there's a podcast that i like also called the happiness lab Mm. um with dr Lori santos and basically it's a presentation of um evidence-based things that you can incorporate into your life uh to increase your level of happiness, which in turn, you know, decreases anxiety and depression. Right. So that's, it. I would recommend, yeah, I would recommend that podcast. That's awesome. Happiness. And how it? recommended that podcast. Happy- the Happiness Lab. With happiness Lab. Dr. Lori Santos. Okay, perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want the audience to uh, take away something here when it comes to uh, traditional versus optional uh, Western medicine it is such a big difference that you guys are trying to incorporate what, like I said, it's rare to find a Western medicine doctor talk about nutrition as a form of medicine. You know, like your your health is based off of, obviously we can't survive if we don't have the right nutrients in our bodies, right? Chemical pills aren't going to do us any help if we don't have the nutrients in our system to help aid our, our cells to, to work. But what you guys are doing is good because now you guys are giving people this awareness of food is, food can be medicine, um, you know, being able to be quiet in a place and listening to your inner self and, and, and calming your, having the empowerment to calm yourself down through meditation um, is a big, big component of health. And I think uh, that's a great, great thing that you guys are doing there. Um, so Dr. Hunt, I'm going to, I'm going to do a quick break. And then when I come back, I'm going to go to Dr. Roboto. And then after that, I'm going to um, maybe uh, do another break and then come back to you and, and close up the uh, the interview, but I just want to say thank you so much. I mean, I appreciate you giving us a little bit of insight into you because I I'm meeting you for the first time on the phone, and um, it's my pleasure and honor uh, to be a part of your 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 group. You know, Dr. Roboto is my my uh, doctor, and um, I haven't gotten a chance formally to meet you yet, so it's my pleasure to speak with you. Um, but we'll be back with you. Don't worry, We're, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> and and the audience All right. too. Well, <laughs> All right, dear. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to be right back. We're going to go to a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk with uh, her partner in crime. And we're going to talk about osteopathic uh, medicine and what that means to your body. And both are with Healing Tides Primary Care. Don't go anywhere. You don't need to be a member of a gym to get your health and fitness back on track. Be fit for you with a Be Fit for Health online personal training and nutrition program. With 30 years of personal training experience, Bianca will help you better yourself and be fit for health. For more information or to schedule a free wellness consultation, visit BeFit4Health.com for more. 
Okay, we're back, guys. Um, you know, just to give you a little update on what we're doing, we're speaking with two incredible uh, doctors, Dr. Aaron Hunt and Dr. Shauna Rabato, and we are talking with them on Healing Ties Primary Care is their clinic. Um, we're trying to give you guys an option that not all Western medicine uh, doctors are just strictly by the book. Some of them are looking at optional care um, and, you know, and I don't know if you guys understand what an osteopathic doctor is, but I'm going to have uh, Dr. Shauna go over some of the details of what her background is and what she's doing differently. But she's partnered up with Dr. Hunt and um, they are together putting together a clinic that is very optional and alternative and holistic, but at the same time, still traditional Western medicine. Uh, Dr. Roboto, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, Bianca. Hi. So um, I got a chance to get to know your partner, Dr. Hunt, and it was really interesting, really great um, to speak with her. She, and, I, and I'm and not sure because I know you guys are in the same office if you got to hear what she had stated because of the way that our board works, you know, when we have one on, the other person can't hear the conversation. But hopefully you got a chance to hear something. But we talked. Yes, I did. Oh, good, good. So I don't have to repeat myself. Yay. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> So I just wanted to kind of go over your part of your business. Like you guys are partnered together and I know you collaborate, but what is your part in this partnership? Like what exactly separates you from Dr. Hunt in the way that you treat your patients when they come in? Right. So we are both family medicine physicians. So we both practice primary care Um so I see patients as a primary care physician, but I also, uh, since I'm a DO, I also practice osteopathic manipulative treatment, which, um, so as a DO, we uh, learn, you know, Western medicine, like, like an MD does, but we also take additional courses um, uh, where we learn how to diagnose and treat with our hands. So, nice. so I do a lot of body work. Um, and uh, I can treat different conditions with osteopathic manipulation, um, you know, a lot of musculoskeletal stuff, um, you know, aches and pains, fibromyalgia, joint problems, um, but also, um, you know, I do some cranial sacral, so some cognitive stuff such as post concussive syndrome, migraines, other types of headaches. Um, so a lot of things can be treated with, osteopathic manipulation, even acid reflux or um, GI issues, you know, constipation. So it, it's not just limited to musculoskeletal issues. So are you saying that your, your, your manipulations are similar to a chiropractor's? Ah, good question. Um, it, in some ways it can be, um, you know, chiropractors typically... Um, practice one modality that we were taught in school, which is HVLA, um, high velocity, low amplitude. But we um, learn, I would say, about 50 other modalities in in um, osteopathic medical school. And a lot of the focus, um, chiropractors tend to focus on the spine, and we uh, in addition to the spine, focus on every, <laughs> you know, the whole body. Um, right. I like to work a lot, do a lot of fascia work because I am a big proponent on unwinding the fascia. And um, the fascia, as you know, is a you know big component of our body. It's a connective tissue right. um, that kind of acts like saran wrap in our body. So when it's wound up, it can bind up our muscles, which can then pull our bones. So I find that even gentle manipulations um, that focus on the fascia will help unwind everything. Yeah, it's, and if you're touching one part of the, from what I understand with the connective tissue, if you're manipulating one part of the, the connective tissue, you're also connecting to something else somewhere else in the body because it is mm-hmm. all linked together. And, and with the fascia too, it's like if someone comes to you and they're dehydrated, um, it can cause all sorts of havoc too because the fascia holds a lot of the hydration in the water in our bodies. So it's yes. it's a big yes. it's a big component of the way that we feel. So when you manipulate, is is it a intrusive or is it a very mild, gentle, um, uh, suggestive touch? How does that work? 
Because you're not a chiropractor, so chiropractor. yeah, what do you do? Uh, oftentimes, it it feels very gentle. Um, uh, some some patients report that it feels like I didn't really move much, where I just put my hands there and just did a minor movements, um, but they could feel big changes in their body. I also um, use what we call a Fulford percussion hammer, which uh, was invented by an osteopath named Dr. Fulford, who um, was actually an engineer, and he noticed that vibrational energies at different frequencies um, help unwind stuck fascia. So I like to use the percussion hammer um, kind of normally in the beginning of a treatment to help um, open the body up, and that allows me to be more successful and more effective when I um, then use my hands to treat. It does feel like a massager. Like, you know those massages that you get, those handheld <laughs> massagers? Unfortunately, those massages right. are one speed, and uh, you can't really yeah. control that, and you don't know what frequency that it's at, so you're you're taking a chance with that. But you're able to um, control the frequency and the speed in which this... Um, component is used on the body so therefore you're not really being too intrusive with the vibration which is an important um, right. point to make right and what I like about it you know just um, and similar to how Dr. Hunt and I both practice our medicine how we practice medicine is not one size fits all yeah. so and same with the percussion hammer um, it's not just one frequency that the body responds to every body responds to different frequencies. Every um, you know different parts of some one person's body responds to different frequencies. So um, it's I like the flexibility with that. Yeah, yeah, it's for sure, and it does give you an opportunity to warm up the uh, the area too. So if you want to do manipulation, you can. It, it'll be it'll give quicker. Um, and I always tell chiropractors this: it's always a good idea to. Try to soften the muscle at first before you actually try to move the bone because the muscle moves the bone. And if you don't, if you have a tight area, nothing's going to move. I mean, that, that thing's yeah. going to be stuck. So I know that exactly. you do, I know you do those two um, types of things, but you do other things as well. Um, give me a little bit about how uh, the kind of services that you are, you, you provide besides, besides that. I mean, you do some screenings, don't you? Yes, we do. So- Oops, I think I lost you. Hold on. There you are. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Perfect. Okay, sorry about that. No so worries. both Dr. Hunt and I, as, as primary care physicians, um, we offer full services uh, for primary care, um, you know, management of chronic conditions like, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, also some screening. So we do pap smears um, for cervical cancer screening. Um um, order mammograms and do annual wellness exams, colon cancer screenings. Um, we do a lot of STD oh, counseling, wow. STD screening, um, STD treatment. We also do PrEP and PEP for HIV prevention, uh, as well as non-surgical birth control management, you know, Nexplanon, birth control pills, Novavring. We do minor procedures as well um, under local anesthesia, so trigger point injections, okay. joint injections. Uh, wound care, minor wound care, so, you know, some lancing, incision, and drainage. Um, and as Dr. Hunt mentioned, we also do a lot of um, mental health management, which is Needing very necessary now. Yeah. this time. Yeah, yeah <laughs> everyone seems to be looking for some kind of help with uh, dealing with the stress of maybe financials or being at home and not knowing what to do when it comes to taking care of their, their health. Um are you finding that that's becoming more prevalent in your practice than anything else? Or is, is that something that the anxiety and the depression, is that something that you guys are dealing on a more regular basis? It's, it's more regular than I've seen in the past. Um, but I would say we still see a balanced array of, of different primary or different conditions that a normal primary care clinic would see. I do a lot of, um, chronic medical condition management to, you know, diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Um, and I, I find that 
a lot of patients that come to me want to find other means, um, adjuncts to um, care other than their, in addition to their medication. Got it. Yeah, it's a, it makes a, a big difference to have that support and to be able to share with, um, you know, your clients uh, options to, to be able to uh, control uh, some of that um, response. Because I know that when it comes to um, anxiety, uh, sometimes it can become uh, a chronic um, situation where it may be un- more like a sympathetic uh, response instead of it becoming like a, a sporadic, like a stress caused it at that moment or whatever, but it can become something that becomes more habitual in the body system if, if it's not treated correctly. Um, what do you, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, I 100% agree. And, you know, as, as you know, there's so many ways to treat anxiety. Uh, medication is just one of them. And Dr. Hunt talked about other ways. Uh, meditation is key. Um, the path manipulation also helps treat the autonomic system. So I can help you know, deregulate the sympathetic drive and kind of bring up the parasympathetics, which helps with relaxation. Yeah. And, and I think giving those tools to your patients will make a big difference. Like I said, people don't know what they don't know. And most people still don't see meditation as a source of, of healing because they, they still don't understand how the brain works, how the mind works and how your body can't, your brain can't tell the difference between something that you physically do and something that you think. It sees them both as the same uh, existing in the same level because it, it, your brain doesn't see the outside world. Your brain just knows based on feeling, right? And response to that feeling. Your, your body just sends a chemical reaction to the system and, uh, then you get this, this, um, either a negative or a positive response. So I think giving people tools to teach them how to quiet down their mind and the, uh, reaction to the stressors that may be out on their external portion of their, of their existence is a way of teaching uh, skill sets to deal with um, people or their environment. And I think that's where I'm seeing a lot of changes happening in mental health, where a lot of practitioners mm-hmm. are now doing that. Um, and it's great that your office is doing that too. And even though you guys aren't psychiatrists or psychologists, you guys are um, at least sh- you know sending them in that pathway of, of uh, of med- you know way of dealing with their anxiety. Now I know that you're you guys refer patients out too to different um, experts and things like that. But um, how much of that happens, and how much of of your patients do you guys uh, uh, take care of internally when it comes to their their basic needs? Because you're saying you're doing a lot of things in one office, right? And and we we try to um, do as much as we can because we understand that. Now, once you refer a patient out, it it becomes less convenient for them. So within the scope of our knowledge, we will try to do what we can. And that's why we do a lot of our own well women exams instead of referring out. We try to do some minor procedures instead of referring out. But, of course, once it's beyond what we can do in this clinic, then we will refer to specialists. Um, So... I can't give you an exact percentage, but I think for the most part, before we refer out, we really try to see what we can do here. Good. Yeah, and it's easier for people to go in one, 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 one-stop one shop type of thing. Uh, you don't want to be constantly going from one doctor to another doctor to another doctor. It, it gets exhausting for one ailment. It's um, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. And people are so busy nowadays. Well... Um, so I was going to say, do you have um, any uh, suggestions as far as, you know, how people can get a hold of you guys and how they can reach out to you if they want to, um, you know, try some of the osteopathic manipulations that you do? And um, is there a number that they can reach out to uh, to get in touch with you or a website? Yes, yes. Uh, so they can call us directly. Um so to reach Dr. Hunt, um, they can give her a call. Her phone number is 808-271-2619. And 
uh, to reach me, you can call me at 808-45. Oh, you just cut out. Let me, uh, doc, Dr. Shana, let me get you, let me write, let me uh, put the number out. It's going to be 808-451-9520. Um, are you still on or do we lose you? Oh, I'm okay, still on. Okay, okay, good, good. Because you just cut out at the right in the crucial moment when oh, you're giving me your number, and I'm that. like, and I'm like, wait. <laughs> Thanks for filling me in. Yeah, I was like, no, I gotta give. I, I can't do that. So I know you guys have a website, and the website is somewhere in my notes. Why don't you go ahead and and give it to us? It is healingtidesprimarycare.com. Perfect. All one word. And you guys have an IG account as well as Facebook, correct? Yes. Okay, and and it's the same All name. Healing Tides Primary Care. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And then um, other than that, I mean, um, you know, everybody, this is a great duo. I mean, I, I know personally because I go to that office and I, and I do get my care um, and I, I appreciate um, both of these doctors. Um, I don't know if Aaron's going to hear me, but I'm, I'm going to, I guess, say my, my goodbyes to you guys now because I, I don't want to go into commercial and then bring you guys back and then just cut you guys off. But is there any last minute thoughts that you have um, that you'd like to share before I say switch switch over to Dr. Hunt, say goodbye to her as well? No, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to get our practice out there because I think that this is a very special practice and and um, we just have something different to offer patients in terms of partnership in you know achieving optimal health. So oh, thank yeah. you, Bianca. Oh, you're welcome. It was my pleasure, and, and I'm glad. I, I'm like I said, people don't know what they don't know, and they don't know you exist unless someone <laughs> tells them. So, um, hopefully, you'll be able to help more people out there, and, and they'll respond to the show, and, and they'll reach out to you, and, and at least pick your brain on what else they can do, you know, for their health. So, thank you very much for coming on, and um, you have a good rest of your day. I'm going to say goodbye to Dr. Hunt, and and then we'll we'll call it a day with you guys. <laughs> Dr. Hunt, are you there? I'm here, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to say, um, I said uh, goodbye to your partner, but I wanted to say uh, thank you and, and goodbye to you. But before I do, is there any last-minute thoughts that you'd like to share with the audience? Oh, I, th- I think that we covered everything, but I, I mean, I definitely wanted to thank you for having oh. us on your show. Sure. Um, yeah, it's 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 fun to talk about our practice because we're just both so excited about how uh, different it is and how special we think it is and just wanted to, happy to be able to share it with people. Well, I think what you guys have there is pretty special. I think any doctor that thinks outside the box is special. And um, I appreciate you guys giving people more options than just, I mean, I don't want people to think I, I'm downing Western medicine. I think it's very necessary, but then, you know, one modality doesn't is one size doesn't fit all everything. So, and I know you guys figured that out and that's why you're doing what you're doing. So for that, you know, good luck with everything. And I, and I hope, um, you know, you, like I was telling uh, Shauna that hopefully you guys are able to help others with this because I think it gives them a place to go for options. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I do have to say Western medicine has its place, which we definitely, you know, went to school and we are experts in that, but yes. we are also, know that there are other options and yes. people don't necessarily want to subscribe strictly to Western medicine. So we're yeah. definitely open to any ideas that people have of things that they might think would work and can like investigate those with them. But just, you know, yeah, we're a society that's instant gratification. Person, we can't, so. we can't wait for one answer. We ha- we want options, right? So we're that kind of a society now. So you guys are going with the times well, thank you, Dr. Hunt. I appreciate your time. I really do. And um, I look forward to a meeting with you in person at one day soon. Yeah, I hope I get to meet you soon, too. Aloha. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. And when I come back, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about what's happening in our uh, society when it comes to lifestyle choices. And don't go anywhere because this is kind of important. I'm going to be going over some details on things that you may know or may not know, but it is going to be quite interesting. Again, we were talking with uh, Dr. Hunt and Dr. Uh, 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 Roboto at, regarding their practice at uh, Healing Tides Care. And um, please, please, please give them a call. And, and if you guys have any questions on that, you know where to find me. It's BeFit, the number four, health.com. Go on the contact page and I can definitely guide you and, and support you in the direction in which you want to go. So 
Again, um, BeFitForHealth.com. We'll be right back. You don't need to be a member of a gym to get your health and fitness back on track. Be fit for you with a Be Fit for Health online personal training and nutrition program. With 30 years of personal training experience, Bianca will help you better yourself and be fit for health. For more information or to schedule a free wellness consultation, visit BeFit, the number four, health.com for more. Okay, gosh, that was a great show. Um, you know, when you're talking with doctors regarding, um, you know, health and wellness and what options do we have? You know, it's it's really good to have open-minded, outside-the-box thinking doctors. And, you know, you're talking to someone who's probably seen over in the past 15, 20 years because of the fibromyalgia and the PVCs that I had. And I say had because there's a new, uh, you know, new discovery for me that whatever it is that I'm doing, and I'll tell you what it is that I'm doing, has actually taken my PVCs from 15% of my total heart beat throughout the day is PVCs, which is preventricle contractions. So we talked about with Dr. Singh last week regarding irregular heartbeats. So 15% of those beats were irregular, meaning that I was not happy. Like I, I literally, it would stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. And that doesn't feel good. You get tired really quickly. Um, you have to sit down. You want to, it's better when you just kind of maybe slow things down. So your heart rate has this uh, innate ability to slow down when you're sleeping. So you want to sleep so that your body goes back into a better rhythm. Well, you know, recently when I did my echocardiogram, my, my PVCs were non-existent. That's really rare. I mean, when I say that, it's like with the medication I was taking was not even considered enough to make a dent. That's why the doctor was like, you know, you figured it out. Whatever you were doing, you figured it out. And what I was doing was a lifestyle choice. I've been more co- conscious of of the way that I react to things. So, you know, I'm Armenian by, by descent. And, you know, you, you can be a little bit passionate about the way you feel about things. And I'm not subduing my passion, but what I'm saying is that I'm now controlling the way that I respond to negative um, events or people. Um, instead of it making it about me taking it personally, I'm seeing this, this is probably not even about me. This is probably something that's outside of my existence. So why do I even become a part of it? Um, and worrying about things that aren't even happening. You know, we have a tendency to take something and we have a tendency to think about it and then come up with our own reality that hasn't even happened. And we worry about that. Why are we doing that to ourselves? Why are we putting our body into a sympathetic process where fight or flight becomes our dominant and our healing stops? So because I've been doing this meditation, um, breathing, eating well, changing and being conscious of the subconscious thoughts, like the, the, the uh, jibber jabber that you have in your head about yourself, you know, like, I'm not good enough. Am I, am I pretty enough? Am I smart enough? All of that stuff where you start dogging yourself about, yeah, what do you, who do you think you are? You think you're going to be able to get that job or you're going to be able to be successful. Why are we doing that to ourselves? You know, if you can stop the jibber jabber from a negative talk in your head and start being conscious of the things that you're saying to yourself where you're in control of what you say or the what you choose to listen to is going to help your body then get into a place of less stress because you're constantly worrying and tweaking out on things and to a place of much more balance and where your body is able to heal. Um, I'm living proof. I'm not cured from PVCs, but the symptoms are gone. And that's huge, guys. And when you're living in that, that's huge. So my next goal is fibromyalgia. Now, I don't know if I have fibromyalgia. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, but I do believe that if my thoughts can actually help my body get to a place of resilience with the help of my doctors, of course, I'm not not doing this without them, um, but I'm measuring things. I'm constantly doing blood work. I'm constantly doing things that are measuring me because I'm like a science lab right now. I am, I am the, the, the little rat in that little cage that I'm, I'm testing things out on to make sure this is going to work or not. And it's so far so good. I mean, I have less flare ups now, um, because my stress levels are lo- lessened. So really quick, um, I have like about 10 minutes, um, just to give you guys an idea of what 
money is being spent on health care. We spent last year $316 billion on cardio-related costs, $327 billion on diabetes. $11,000 per person was spent on health care last year. Okay? Now, you know, if you think about it, this is on, on sick. You know, if, if people who have uh, underlying issues that maybe have created because of unhealthy diets and things like that. So if you think about um, how to overcome your health, if you go into, um, you know, some publications that are out there and some of the things that I've been reading when it comes to lifestyle choices, we get to choose 80% of our health is based off of the choices we make. This is on, on a publication, on a, on a journal that was written. Um, and they were talking about, this was written on 2009. It's on, uh, I want to say, POT SDM study. It was, uh, this was done in 2009. Uh, and this was based on medical lifestyles. Okay, so 80% of the way that you feel and your health is based off of the choices you make, whether it's your food, whether it's sleep, whether it's, um, whether it's your exercise levels, things like that. And 20% is, is based off of the care of, of your doctor. You know, like, you know, how they can help you either balance out your, your illnesses or your symptoms and through pharmaceuticals or what have you. But 80% of the way that you are is based off of the choices that you make. So think about that. Processed foods, um, you know, partying like a rock star, not getting enough sleep so that your body can actually go into a place of healing when you're sleeping because that's what sleep is, is doing, right? It's helping to regenerate your system. So in this um, study, it would look at four factors. Your BMI, which is your body mass index, which is, is should be less than 30 because if you're above 30, you're considered obese. Um, if you smoke, um, if you participate in three and a half hours of physical activity, and also, what type of a diet that you're eating is it? Is it more um, vegetable, fruit, low, less on red meat type of thing? Um, and they found that when you're able to control some of these things, your chronic illness is decreased by eighty percent. Think about that. Um, and this isn't me making this up. They talk about um, lifestyle choices, and so there there was a study also on um, a, I guess controlled group. They, they were in the movie theaters. They gave everybody in the movie theater, half of them got a big box of popcorn that was stale and the other people got regular popcorn that was good. The people that got the big box of popcorn that was stale still ate, over ate, more than they should have. They, and this is called mindless eating, mindless um, everything. I mean, think about it. Everything that we're doing, let's say you're stressed out and you're going to a bag of potato chips and you start eating it. Next thing you know, it, the bag is gone. But you're not even you're like, when did that happen? Mindless eating. So be mindful of the way that you um, do things uh, so that your your choices are specific to your ability to become a healthier person. Um, if you're trying to lose weight, this is key, right? Caloric intake, energy in, energy out. If you're not exercising and you're consuming energy, guess what happens, guys? You're going to pat rack on those weights and it's not going to help you at all. So this was an interesting study because it showed that people, most people are kind of going on automatic pilot and this is where um, eventually it creeps up on them and they're like, oh, oh, great, I've got, you know, heart disease or I've got diabetes now um, or I have a, a gout because I've got abundance of uric acid due to the lack of movement or to the lack of, of types of foods that I'm eating that may cause more of an acidic response. So... You know, these kinds of things are important. Um, they're talking about, you know, certain um, areas in the population of this planet. They call it the blue zone. There was a book written um, called Nine Lessons of Living Longer uh, from the author Dan. Uh, last name is spelled B-U-E-T-T-N-E-R. Um, it's a book on the blue zone and their lessons and how these people are able to live over a 100 years. I mean, there's, there's a, something to be said about having a lifestyle and it being a contagious as like a virus would be contagious if you have a bug and you give it to some other people based on the fact that maybe their immune system is also low. You are what you eat. You are who you hang out with. The blue zone people um, live a similar lifestyle. They're physically active enough. They eat mostly a plant-based um, type 
food diet, but they do have some protein, obviously, but not an a, a enormous amount. Um, they do have, uh, you know, a handle on the way that they deal with stress and they have purpose in their life. Like they, they actually have goals. They, they enjoy waking up in the morning and going and doing what they want to do because they love it. So there's something to be said about studies like that where there are a groups of people that live together in clusters and they live to be over a hundred years old. Why are they, and they're living a quality, they're not sickly hundred, they're actually healthy hundred. So we need to start looking into those types of cultures and seeing how we can implement that into our lives. And you can say, yeah, Bianca, you don't understand. I don't have money. I don't have, you know, the ability to get the kind of food that you're talking about. It's, it does, it's not going to cost you a whole lot of money to be able to make a few changes in your life that might tweak you back into a place where you can start controlling your health. And I'm just saying this because I really genuinely care about everybody here. And I really want you guys to understand that there are ways that you can control your diseases based off of your diet. For example, there was another journal written out not that long ago about heart disease. And they're saying it was a journal of family practice. Um, it showed that nutritional intervention has shown in studies that halted and even reversed CAD in three weeks. Um, food is medicine, guys. It also was true for a diabetes uh, a study where in about 16 days, they were able to help the healing process begin in a plant-based food nutritional component. This isn't me just saying that. This is this is written journals written about particular people with particular illnesses that actually are able to control their health based off the foods that they consume. So give it a try. It doesn't hurt you. Um, listen, you don't forget who I am. I am a health coach, and this isn't an advertisement for you to make money. I'm here to help you guys. If you need to reach out to me, go to my website. There is a contact page. It's called BeFit, the number four health dot com. I have a YouTube channel, Be Fit for Health, where there is a, a slew of videos that I've made when I'm recording the show, and my MP3, um, my podcast is on my website as well, so you can listen to it if you don't want to look at my mug. It's fine. It's all right. You know, I do have a face for radio. It's all good. Um, but um, it is something that I'm I'm trying to do here is to give you guys options to learn and empower yourselves to take control of your health and don't leave it up to your doctors to tell you if you're going to live or die or if you're going to, you know, get better or not. This is your body. This is your ability. This is your life to do what you need to do to get yourself to a place of health or your family members. So good luck to you. Reach out to me. I'm here for you. I know we have a lot to talk about. I'm really excited for the next show that's coming up. We're going to be talking with various doctors um, that I have set up, and it's going to be a great time next week as well. Thank you for joining me on today's show. I know that you guys are ready to take on the day. It's going to be a beautiful day in Hawaii. Go out there and enjoy the sunshine. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I wish you all the best. Aloha.